So, why do I love Mina? You know, besides me being a sucker for horny women with healthy thighs. Well, the obvious reason for me and others is that her character design. Everyone may have different reasons to like it, or maybe they like the aforementioned horns or the striking design of her eyes. Uh, for me, it's a combination of all of it. She's like a big mishmash of all my favorite design choices. She's actually almost exactly what a character uh, I would have designed for My Hero Academia would have been like, if she didn't already exist. The black eyes, the horns, the pink skin, the healthy thighs, and that's all just the physical design choices. She's also generally positive and fun, which I'm always a sucker for. Now, that explains how I initially made the easy decision that she was best girl. However, that does not account for her tyrannical control over that spot, even as more characters are introduced and as we flesh out the rest we already know. See, the reason she remains there is due to the great deal of care taken to show the nuances and foreshadow her potential. Now, you probably think I'm full of it. Mina hasn't done anything in the anime or the manga. And to that I have to say, well, why you gotta point it out, man? It makes me sad. <laughs> You're right. Hell, even Horikoshi has mentioned that he's sad that she's been sidelined. And uh, speaking of what he said here, uh, what's this? Proof that he plans for her to be important and powerful? Oh yeah, how about that shit? So what foreshadowing am I talking about? She exhibits a lot of the same characteristics that our main characters have. Same traits that are often used as benchmarks for becoming great heroes. Uh, you know, the, the things like the whole moving before thinking, maintaining your composure during critical times, uh, being happy, making people laugh, that whole shtick. And physically speaking, she's also solidly accepted as one of the best in the class. She's even lumped into the mobility category. Everyone in this group has really good mobility. Along the likes of Ida the Speedster, Ojiro the Monkey Man, and Tape Spider-Man. Oh, and, you know, the main character, Deku, as long as we're doing those parallels. She even knocks I am out with a single punch, without quirk enhancement for that, by the way. That was just her raw power and muscles. And yeah, he's kind of a wimp. But to be able to do that at all is still impressive, like, one hit KOing an actual person is difficult. The kinds of characters that could actually do that also mostly fall into the main character category, by the way. And actually, a lot about her parallels the main characters when you think about it. She's got a quirk similar to Bakugo's in that, you know, they're both very dangerous when wielded against other people. Um, she gets no offers for internships despite her high placements in the tournament. You made it pretty far in the tournament. It's weird you didn't get any offers. I know! Just like Deku, most likely because of the danger of her quirk. And she moves to save classmates from a powerful villain in their backstory, essentially, just like Deku did. She even parallels other in-universe heroes that we know have achieved success. Like... One of the big three, the, one of the best students at UA, is a big airhead who just sort of exists and is very aloof. Um, hell, even Endeavor, who has a very dangerous quirk against people, also has achieved the number two spot. So next, talking about her quirk, which is a very scary one, Acid is like super strong and super versatile, uh, yet it's a quirk she views as a disadvantage against humans. Hell, Bakugo even calls her out for not training her quirk just because it's hard against humans. It shouldn't matter if it's robots or actual people. You need to learn how to control your quirk! If we compare their two powers, there's actually a lot of similarities, like both can be used to severely harm people, can be used to remove debris, mobility, can even be used offensively and defensively. Now obviously explosions and acids are quite different, but the comparison is at least there, and uh, it also shows us how personalities can focus the quirks. Since Bakugo spent most of his time having his quirk and being unrelenting in the pursuit of using it to get the top spot, whereas Mina is a flunky and aloof person, but it could be reasonable to assume her strength might be comparable at least, uh, if she would just overcome the flaws and, and had a similar drive to the likes of Bakugo. So, she may be getting there slower than him, but she could still be on her way to the kind of hero that he's going to become. Now, these flaws in this setup allows for great potential as a character, and can give a very satisfying character arc and development once she finally gets there. And this is what leads me to think that she'll be important and powerful, and this is why I love Mina Ashido. <laughs>